Hey, it's awesome to have you here in the house of God. Amen. How many of you guys are glad to be in the house of God today? Man, there's no other place I'd rather be. Hallelujah. I'm honest with you. There's no other place I'd rather be. Because God has got a great word for you this morning. I tell you, God has got an amazing, amazing, amazing word for you. Man, it's good to know that God's in the house with us. Aren't you glad that he said he'd never leave us nor forsake us, amen, but he is here with us, amen, and, and for those of you watching live around the world, wherever you are, he's with you too, because he never leave you nor forsake you, so amen for that. So, uh, uh, man, this has been a great year so far. Yeah. I'm telling you, this has been a great, great, great year. Um, there's so much, are you going to go through armor and all that stuff later at the end of service? Okay, oh, I'm not going to get into that then, so praise God. Uh, let's, let's, let's already take a look at our theme for this year, amen, let's take a look at our theme. Our theme is what? 2020 is a year of harvest. harvest, amen. Now, I know a lot of people, we, we've had testimonies at week after week after week. The first two months of this year um, have been just awesome for so many people. And uh, how many of you guys know you need to be believing God for harvest, amen? Now, not, not just financial, but in all sorts of areas, amen? Now, we have had a lot of financial blessings, though, that have happened in people's lives for this year. 2020 is a year of harvest. And, and see, one thing I love about God is, it, is it's at any time, any day, anywhere, you know, that God said that. If you were here last, how many of you guys were here last week? A lot of you, if you weren't here, you need to get the teaching, man. My wife taught such an amazing message last week that, it, that, that it's at any day, at any second, something can happen. But you need to be expecting that, right? right. Don't be expecting that maybe in December something might happen or, or maybe October, you know, if God's really good, it'll happen, man. Anytime, anywhere, right? It can be happening. And so I know stuff happened to us. Uh, again, which I'm very, very thankful for. So we've had multiple things already happen in the first two months of this year. And so um, I do want to have a uh, Teresa come up, share a quick little testimony uh, of what happened to her. And the reason why I'm bringing her up is this, is I'm going to start bringing people up that are telling me about all these things that are happening. And the reason why is this. Come on up here, young lady. The reason why is I don't want you all thinking, oh, pastor's not telling us the truth. He's blowing smoke. I mean, this much stuff really can't be happening for people this branch and that branch. I'm just being honest with you. And so I want you to hear from other people themselves. Amen. So, so uh, check Visa MasterCard. Jesus, don't leave earth without him. Yep, he's on. All right. So, amen. Look at Dave back there. He's saying, oh, they gave her a microphone. Hey, come on, sister. <laughs> I just want to say that what Pastor's saying is true, at yeah. least for us. In the span of three weeks, we have had $10,000 come into our bank account. Amen. Yeah, that's good stuff. And as of today, we have successfully ushered four children into adulthood. Happy birthday, Brent. Oh, hey, bro, yeah, there he is. 18. Yeah. Woo. <laughs> God is awesome. Yes, he is. Amen. Praise God. That's awesome. Amen. See, now, I don't know about you, but when you get an extra $10,000 over and above and everything else and it's coming in, that's good stuff. And see, the thing about it is, see, last week um, we were sharing, giving a testimony about how somebody, and, and this was actually from the North Branch, somebody from the North Branch was trusting God for tens of thousands of dollars. And, and, and we're talking um, uh, in excess. And so uh, uh, they were trusting the Lord for this amount of money over and above normal stuff, and it came in. And, uh, and the, the one that, that they was doing it with, they said it came in quick. We've never seen money move like this and do this other kind of stuff. And, and so he was giving praise and honor. So I was sharing that last week. Well, Teresa says right afterwards, man, we just had that happen for us. You know, so we've had it happen for people up north. We've had it happen for people down here. And then also this week, somebody sends me a text and says, Pastor, I know you're going to believe this. Because <laughs> how many of you guys know a lot of people, you're never going to believe this. Well, believers are supposed to believe, amen? I mean, and so this person sends me another text this week and says, so th this person's already received a huge breakthrough this year of something they were trusting God for, received a bonus uh, from work that they were totally unexpecting, but they were believing God to be able to do something, and they got a bonus they weren't even thinking about. And so they were totally super excited about that, and then got another thing that happened this week. They said, Pastor, I don't know what's going on this year. 
but they just sent me another thing, another invoice from HR that they're giving me another bonus. Yeah. Yeah. Bigger than the one, it's actually, it actually is, well, it is 20 times Amen. the size of the last one they just got. Wow. I didn't even know until I just computed that in my head because they told me how much it was. 20 times what the last one was. And this person said, I just, I just got to tell you, this is definitely a year of harvest. She goes, I sure hope people would just get on board with this thing. Yeah. And so it's been happening to a lot of people. And I just want to encourage you. Like I said, it, now a lot of times, it's, it, a lot of people are trusting God for resources. They are trusting God for supernatural stuff. But uh, how many guys know it's not just, not just the resources coming in, but how many guys know God can give you a break? You know, it's kind of like the favor of God or something like that. Well, let me just kind of tell you what happened with us. So uh, in, in our house that we have here, we have a kitchenette um, down, in our, uh, down in our lower level. And, and what we've needed to do is we've actually needed to get a new uh, refrigerator down there. But the thing about it is, is, is um, because it's a kitchenette, it's got smaller cabinets and smaller this. And so, so you have to get one of those countertop um, refrigerators, which are a lot more expensive because... Everybody wants the bigger ones, that, and, and so they make those on mass, and so countertops are more expensive uh, to be able to get. And so I was uh, talking with the Lord, and I've been talking with the Lord for a few months now, and I said, all right, got to nail this thing. we got to get this out. And I said, Lord, this is all I want to pay for it, though, is this, X amount of dollars. And so uh, how many of you guys know you can have whatever you say? Yeah. Contrary to what everybody else says. So I'm just telling you, so I've been looking for a couple months for a refrigerator. And, and how many of you guys know... It's good to have new. Yeah. It is. Okay, now, now I'm just going to be honest with you. With, with what we were wanting to pay for this countertop uh, refrigerator, um, the only thing that was even close in that category was all used and used by a few years. And so I'm like, man, but Lord, I would like to have a new one. I would, man, I would love, I mean, because I, I like, God, I know you, man, when you drove, rode that donkey in, it was a donkey no one ever rode before. Mm-hmm. You guys remember that? It was a new donkey. Yeah. It was a new, it was Okay, that's a whole, all right, you guys don't get that. But anyway, some, I don't even know what he's talking about. When Jesus came in, you know, and they put the palm leaves down, it was, okay, all right. So, but to make a long story short is this. I ended up running into somebody that was, that was working at Lowe's uh, that I haven't seen, but I know they, they attend another church here in town, and, and uh, we actually ended up doing ministry together one time. And so we were talking all that stuff, and I was in there looking at the fridges in there, seeing if anything came in or whatever. And, and so... I said, well, this is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for this, and I'm looking for this, and, and I'm wanting it around this price range. And she's kind of like, well, I'll keep my eye out for you. And I'm like, well, praise God. Amen. So I've still been looking at all this other kind of stuff. And then she ends up giving me a call two days later. She says, I don't know if you found anything or not yet, but I want to let you know what just came in. She says, we have a brand new refrigerator that came in. Now, it is a scratch and dent. It's got a little ding up here on the side that nobody will ever see. Can I tell you something? I don't care about a ding on the side that nobody's going to. Now, if it was on my car, that'd be a little bit different. (laughs) But when you can't see it, I really don't care. And she said, well, it's a little bit more than what you were thinking, but I don't know if you want to come take a look at it. I said, I'll be there in about an hour. She's like, okay, well, I'll put it on hold for you. She goes, she goes, I'm getting ready to leave, but I'll let somebody know that you're coming in for it. I'm like, okay. So I went and took a look at it, and it was more than what I wanted to spend. There was a certain number that I wanted. And the thing that on top of this was this is like, God, I don't want to have to go get it and pick it up. I want this thing delivered too. So I know you guys are saying, boy, you sure demand a lot. <laughs> look, my God's able. So to make a long story short, we were looking at that, and, and uh, you know, I looked at the dent, and I'm like, that's nothing. I could take a hammer and go, and it'd be fine, right? And so uh, the lady ended up leaving, and so another guy came and helped me, was an, and he was a manager. He's been there for a while, and, 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 he, and I, said, uh, I said, look, man, um, I know this is the price that you have on it, and I know it's a one-only item. I, I said, but, um, you know, I, I want to pay a little bit less than that if that's all right. And he's like, man, I, he goes, I can't approve that. He goes, I'd have to get the head super, supervisor person to do it. I said, call him. So make a long story short, he calls him and, and, and he, says, uh, he says, hey, this is what we got over here. And, and, the man, and I can hear him talking through the phone and the guy's like, well, what's it listed at? And he goes, this is what it's listed at. And, and mind you, it came out that day, one day. They usually don't ever discount something unless it's been on the floor for like a month or two months. 
And so he comes out that day, he goes, well, what's it listed at? And he goes, well, what's it listed at that? He goes, tell him, I'll, tell him we'll take this for it. And it was the exact number that I said I wanted to pray for the fridge. And then I looked, and then he goes, okay, I'll tell him that. And I, I, and I said, oh, wait, 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 by the way. And he already hung up with, the, I said, by the way, I said, I said, I would like you to, to deliver it to my house with, with that cost. And he's like, I'll just get it taken care of. I'll get it. I'll take care of it. No problem. I, like he didn't want to call the boss back or something like that. He goes, I'll just put it in. So when they put, did the override, I got it for the price that I wanted, and I got it delivered for the price that I wanted, a brand new fridge. Yeah, but pastor, has got a ding on it. You know what? You got a mole. Deal with it. You know what I mean? Come on. We've all got bumps and bruises in there, but it's new, amen? So I just want to tell you, there, and there's, there's, there, we have, okay, I'm not going to get into other stuff that's already happened for us, but I'm just telling you, this is an awesome year. So you know what? When you end up paying over half the price or less than half the price of a brand new fridge, that's good. Yeah. So, so I want to encourage you, don't be thinking you got to get all the money for something that you're wanting. Maybe he might just give you an awesome discount. Right for something new that you're believing God for, amen? So I just want to encourage you with that. If any of you guys are believing God for something, amen? All right, so that's, that's just really good. Okay, let's take a look at Isaiah really quick. Isaiah says this, the least of you will become a thousand, the smallest of mighty nation. I am the Lord in its time. I will do this swiftly, amen? And I'm excited about everybody that's here now and everybody that's coming. I just want to let you know, uh, every week that I'm in here praying, I'm praying that every single seat is filled. And not just these seats, but we got seats over in the other building that we can bring in here. Right. And I'm calling every blue chair filled, every seat filled with a seat in Jesus' name, amen. amen. And not just here, but up at our north branch also. Because there's chairs that they have in storage that we can bring out also and fill in there. So I'm just telling you, be agreeing with me. How many guys can agree with me, amen, that this is coming to pass, amen? Praise the Lord. At least almost every hand went up. That's, at least all I needed was two. So I think I had about two that didn't raise their hand, but everybody else did. So I'm good with that. Amen. Here we go. Matthew says this. It says, God's kingdom is like a pine nut that a farmer plants. It is quite small as seeds go, but in the course of years, it grows into a huge pine tree. And what? Eagles build nests in it. Amen. Just tell your neighbor you're an eagle. You're an eagle. You're an eagle. You're an eagle in Jesus' name. Amen. Because y'all nest in here in Jesus' name. And there are eagles that are soaring in here also in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's take a look at our mission and then we are going to get into the word of God. Here we go. Forgiven Church is here to what? Love God, love others, and to discover and develop the greatness that's within each one of us. Amen. Well, let's talk about more of that greatness today by getting into our faith quote, getting into the word. Come on, everybody. Let's stay into our feet. Grab your Bibles, your cell phones, your iPads, whatever you got your Bible on, and let's say this together. This is my Bible, and I believe it was written for me to understand and agree with. I am what it says I am, set free from all the power of the enemy. I will do what it says to do, then I will see that it is reality. Amen. Got to do it. Got to either knuckle, high five, whatever you want to do on the way down. Amen. If you're a coronavirus freak, you can elbow somebody. Amen. Here we go. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. All right. Some of you guys got that. What was it? What? Yeah, some of you guys didn't hear what I said. I said, you can high-five somebody, knuckle them on the way down. I said, if you're afraid of the coronavirus, you can give them an elbow. <laughs> How many of you guys know you're not supposed to be afraid of the coronavirus? Right. Amen. I'm just telling you, I believe that this is just going to be like all those other things that came. They come and they go. You know, and I, I know people have died from it, but there are more people have died from the normal flu and cold this year than the coronavirus, amen? All people are trying to do is spread fear, and how many of you guys know we're not supposed to give in this fear, right. but we're supposed to trust God? Now, 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 look, I do believe you're still supposed to wash your hands, yeah. all right? Some more than others, amen? I mean, I, mean I, I totally believe that you're supposed to wash your hands and be clean and brush your teeth and not breathe on people real close. I, I'm, look, I'm already like that without the coronavirus, I mean, I'm just, I mean, if you know anything about me, you can ask my family. I'm kind of a clean freak. That's, that's, I wash my hands several times a day. I just do. My dogs, oh, man, my dogs. I don't know. What <laughs> What's this got to do with your message? Absolutely nothing. But see, for those of you who know Willow, who is our lab, <laughs> see, one thing about labs is they got that sniffer. They, they got they, they, they to smell everything. I mean, it is just like, I mean, dogs smell, but, I mean, labs are like, I don't know what it is with them. 
or something like that. But every time she comes in from outside or whatever, she wants to greet me. She wants to put her wet nose on my hand <laughs> or my leg or something. Like, and I'm, uh, I'm washing myself, my, not myself, but my hands or something like that. I mean, I don't know how many times a day because I just, I just think that's gross. Some of you guys are like, oh, that's just wonderful. And then you just rub your hands in it. But I, that's not me. I don't do that kind of stuff. I'm, I'm just telling you, I'm, I, but, you know, don't freak out about this whole coronavirus thing, okay? Let's, let's just be, let's be um, believers when it comes to this stuff, amen? And, ta- and we've actually been talking about that when it comes to our midweek services, the authority of the believer and everything else. So um, let's uh, go do a really quick review here of what we've been through the last, uh, what was it last week, but the last few weeks here. Uh, we are talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and we are talking about how God wants us to have this power in our lives. How many of you guys would like to flow with the same power that Jesus flowed in in Jesus' name? Amen. I mean, we want that power flowing in our lives, but see, you've got to be convinced that God wants that power to flow in your life, or you're never going to flow in it. Amen? If you're always, well, I know God might or he might not, I don't know, God saw, it, it's never going to happen. Because you're doubting and you're, uh, you're in unbelief. But I want to encourage you, because we prayed for several people uh, a few weeks ago, and I'm going to pray for people today also, that, that uh, you might want to receive uh, this feeling that the Bible talks about. It is super, super, super important. Uh, see, the thing about it is, is you can be saved. And you can have your ticket to heaven. Got that. But you can still be lacking everything that God has for you. Because this is the will of God that he wants for you. Amen. So let's take a look at these scriptures really quick and review. Matthew 28, 18 through 20 says this. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Then he said what? Therefore go and make... Wait a minute. Yeah. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Now, I want to encourage you also with this. I know this is repetition for some of you. It's review for some of you. But if it is real to you, it never gets old. It never gets old. And plus, sometimes you've got to hear something multiple times for it really to click. If that makes any sense, that'd be like going and listening to a teaching over and over and over and over again. And every time you listen to that teaching, you get something new out of it. And so that happens. And so I want to encourage you, don't check out just because we're in a review session right now. Amen. And also remember that not everybody knows what you know. So don't take for granted what you know. Amen. Make sure you apply it in our lives. Acts 1, of course, says this. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this, what? Command, and we know that we just read that he said, go teach everybody to obey what I command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. We know that gift is who? Holy Spirit, right? For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Amen? Verse 8 says this, but you will receive power. Everybody say power. Power. Come on, everybody say power. Power power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth and Bluffton, Indiana. How many guys know that's to the ends of the earth? Some people think so because sometimes you you don't find Bluffton on purpose, you know, or or by an accident, right? You got to if you're going to Bluffton, Indiana, you're usually coming on purpose. But I'm just telling you, to the ends of the earth. So this means Fort Wayne. This means Bluffton. This means Burn. This means all the surrounding counties, right? He said, this is what's supposed to happen to all of us. Amen? Because how many of you guys know the natural disciples did not show up in Bluffton, Indiana? This is the right answer for this. Some of you are like, no, no. The 12 disciples, the apostles did not show up in Bluffton, Indiana. So to the ends of the earth, that means it's had to be passed down to everybody else, right? The command that he said that was going to happen, amen? And remember, that power that he says is this, it is the dunamis special miraculous explosive power or force for miracles. Luke 3, 15 and 16, really quick, says, of course, this is Jesus. The people were waiting expectantly, were all wondering in their hearts if John might possibly be the Messiah, John answered them all, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I will come, the straps of whose sandals I'm not worthy to untie, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with what? Fire. Verse 21 says, 
or excuse me, yeah, it says, when all the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized too, and he was praying, heaven was opened. It says, and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove, and a voice came from heaven, you are my son whom I love, with you I am well pleased. And it says, now Jesus himself was about 30 years old when he began his ministry. He was a son, and so it was thought of Joseph's son. Now, how many of you guys know after he received the, the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, it says that he went out into the wilderness and he was tempted, yeah. right? But see, the thing that I love about it is, is after he was tempted and he came back, it says he came back full of the power of God or full of the Holy Spirit's power. Right. Dunamis, miracle-working power. And how many of you guys know God wants us to be full of that exact same power also in our lives? Amen. We know this happened, of course, in Acts chapter 2. Same thing when he prophesied and he said this, Acts chapter 2, verse 1 through 4 says, When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and rest on each of them. And it says, and all of them were what? They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. And we will get into tongues later on. We're not going to be focusing on that today, but we will get into that, why that happened and the benefit of that later on. Not today, but in this series. Very, very, very important. I remember when my wife and I were, were there um, on our trip last year. Or no, it wasn't last year. It was the year before that. And uh, while we were there, I remember they were taking us into his house and I could not read what it said because it was in Hebrew. Uh, that was there. And so we were all in there and we were talking and, you know, people were just kind of looking around. It, was, it wasn't really exciting. It was like, oh, this is a thing, okay. And, and they said, well, this also, by the way, is what they say in Scripture was the place called the upper room. I was like, what? I'm like, man, I thought this was just a house. I just thought this was for, They said, this is the place where they said the, the Spirit of God came down like tongues of fire, and came to rest on all of them. I said, this is the place? They said, that's what they say, this is the place. Before I knew that, I was just looking around. After that, I took my camera out. And I'm like, this is awesome! Nobody else was excited like I was excited. Do you know why? Because they didn't have a revelation of what I understood took place. I still have that on my phone. It is an amazing place. Now, at first, I'm just being honest with you. At first, I was like, oh, this is cool. But when they told me this is where it was, what they said it took place, oh, I got really excited. See, when you understand about the power of God in life, you will remember this was the place where this happened to me. Where the power hit my life, whether it was in church, whether it was at Bible school, whether it was at a conference, whether it was anywhere else, this was the place that that happened, amen? So we know, of course, there were several other examples in, in, in Acts chapter 8, Acts chapter 10, Acts chapter 19, where people were saved and then they received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, right? Now, here we go. Look at Ephesians 1. This is where we finished last time. I'm setting you up. I'm setting you up. Don't be bored on me yet. I'm setting you up. Here we go. Ephesians 1, 15, of course, says this. Let me get there and let me read it here. Ephesians 1, 15 says, For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all God's people, that means you're saved, right? He says, I've not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may what? That you may know him better. Now, a lot of people, that's kind of what they focus on. Oh, you want the Spirit of God so you can get to know the Father better and Jesus better. Well, that's true. But there's more to it than that. If you just keep reading, it says this. I pray that the eyes of your heart, you know what that means? The eyes of your heart means that you get revelation of this. That it's not just head knowledge, that it becomes a revelation to you. Amen. He says, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened, that you'd get this revelation in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance and in his people and his incomparably great what? Power. Great what? Power. Come on, everybody say power. power. That great power for who? Us. For us. And who's he talking to there? He's talking to the church at Ephesus, the whole church. He did not say that great power that's just for the apostles. Right. He did not say that great power that's only for a few people. 
He said that great power that's available to all of us. Amen. Go ahead and tell your neighbor, say, he's talking about you. Right, right, right. Tell your other neighbor, he's talking about you. Right. Now, now I want you to tell your neighbor like you're convinced that he's talking about me. Yeah, he's talking about me. Not just you, but he's talking about me too. All of us, right? He says that great power, that dunamis power for us who what? Who what? Who believe. Question for you. Is there anybody in this place you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? You are a believer in here. Yeah, look at all the hands going up. This power is for you who just raised your hands. For us who believe. Okay. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead. Wow. And seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him head over everything for the church, which is his, whole, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. You know what's awesome about that? Do you notice that he's talking about the power of God there and he's also mixing God's authority Together, And what are we talking about on midweek services? The believer's authority. Isn't it neat to have that he's got these both flowing together? And guess what we're talking about? The power. In midweek, we're talking about the believer's authority. Well, I don't come to midweek service. You should. Amen. You should because you're missing out. Because, man, you don't want to just know one thing. You want to know all as much as you can get. Amen. But I love that he says, he goes, he goes, that power is the same as his mighty strength. That mighty strength, when you break that down, it means, it means, it means a supernatural amount of energy that is focused. It is like an energizing power all at one, one time. I mean, that, 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 that's saying like the same power that, that, that took all of God's power that, that focused at one time to make it super, super powerful is what raised Jesus from the dead. And he said that same power is available for us. How many of you guys know there ain't nothing out there that's got anything against us if we will believe this stuff? Amen. Well, I don't believe this. Then it's not for you. This is to those who are believers. It said, it said, it says, for us who believe. Well, I don't believe. Then this isn't written to you. This is written to people who believe. Amen. We all, we all believers in here, aren't we, in Jesus' name? Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Look at verse 19 and a couple other translations. Look what it says. I pray that you will begin to understand how incredibly great his power is to what? To help those who believe him. It is the same mighty power. It says, oh, the utter extravagance of his work who, is, who trust, us, or trust him. Endless what? Energy. energy. That's the endless energy that he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead. How many of you guys know when God does a miracle, it doesn't dim the lights in heaven? Just wanted to let you know. Well, if we pray for this miracle and we pray for this miracle, you never know the surge it could cause in heaven. No, it's endless energy. There is no surging problem at all. Okay, amen. He says, endless energy and boundless what? Strength. That's supernatural stuff. Sometimes we need some extra strength to get through some stuff. Next translation says this. And so that you can know and understand what is the immeasurable and unlimited and surpassing greatness of his power in and what? For us. See, this power is for us. Jesus, when he said to his disciples, don't go out and be my witnesses because I got something for you that you need. Same thing with all of us. This power is for us to help us and to be able to help other people with this power, right? He says his power in and for us who what? Believe as demonstrated in the working of his mighty strength. And so I think that is absolutely awesome. Now, I'm going to show something today that maybe you guys already all know. Okay, I, I get it. You might already know this, but maybe you don't. I want to really show by scripture where the church is at today. 
I'm not talking about forgiveness. I'm talking about the church in general. Okay? Now, one thing I do want, let me clarify this also. If you are a believer and you are spirit-filled, you are no more saved than the person sitting next to you that is not. Okay? You are no more sanctified. You are no more holy than, than them. Okay? You're saved. They're saved. The thing about it is, is they're just lacking in something that you have. Okay? But it doesn't make you any better than them. Okay, I want to clarify that, okay? But there is a lot of stuff and a lot of things that will deny, right? We saw this, of course, in 2 Timothy really quick. Uh, can, we, can we put that back on the screen? 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 through 5 says this. But mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days, right? It says people will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of good. Treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Wow. It says, having a form of what? Godliness, but denying its what? Power. Of course, I know we've gone through this before, but that's the exact same root word, dunamis power, that Jesus said we're all supposed to have. And he said, in the last days, you're going to have all these people living like this, and they're going to do the same thing. They're going to go to church, but they're going to deny the power, right? A couple other translations in verse, verse uh, 5, look what it says here. It says, they will go to church, yes, but they won't really believe anything they hear. That's one reason why I said this is for believers, people. If you say I'm saved and I'm a Christian, then that means you're a believer. That means this is available for you. So what it means is we got to go from unbelieving to believing. That this is for every single person, right? And, and it says that we're not supposed to be hanging out with a lot of people like that. Now, now, how many of you guys know God wants us to be able to be a positive influence in people? He does. But the thing about it is, is if you can't be a positive influence and, and every time you hang out with somebody else, they're influencing you, then maybe you need to stay away from people like that. That's right, man. If you're sitting there and you believe in this power and all you do is hang around with a bunch of other people who don't believe in this power and they're trying to convince you that you've lost your mind, quit hanging out with people like that. Because those seeds are going to get in your head and eventually drop in your heart. Next thing you know, you're going to throw this out like everything else. Okay? In the last days, people are going to be denying this stuff, right? 2 Timothy, if you flip on over a little bit further. 2 Timothy, look what it says here in 2 Timothy. Oh, let's we'll put it on the screen real quick. Thank you. Beginning in verse 3, yeah, it says this. For a time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. It says they will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. Next translation says this. For there is going to come a time when people won't listen to the truth, but will go around looking for teachers who will tell them just what they want to hear. They won't listen to what the Bible says, but will blithely follow their own misguided ideas. The next translation says this in the message. It says, you're going to find out that there will be times when people will have no stomach for solid teaching, but will fill up on spiritual junk food, catchy opinions that tickle their fancy. It says they'll turn their backs on truth and chase mirages, right? Or something that's really not there. See, in today's church in general, I'm not saying every church is like this. I'm not, and every church has got areas that we need to fix and correct. But in the church today, the biggest thing that pulls crowds is make me feel good messages. Messages that will not talk about living a sanctified, holy life, but messages that will focus all the way on the extreme grace, which basically gives people a license for sin. And people flock to those, 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 those churches because they have a lot, of, a lot of people and a lot of programs. And it helps build when, when all you're doing is talking positive, 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 positive. Now, I believe we should talk positive. I do. But I think we had to teach the whole entire Bible also. Right, right, right. I really believe that. Now, the thing about it is, is the teaching that we're talking about here about the baptism of the Holy Spirit is not accepted by the majority of denominations. Right. Right. Yeah. It is not accepted by the majority of denominations. It is, quote, unquote, off limits to talk about. Well, my question to you is this. If it's off limits to talk about, why is it in the Bible? I'm just kind of curious. 
Well, all we need to focus on is, is you know, just the simple stuff that we all agree on. Just, just this really simple, just basic stuff right here. Just, just, let's just focus on Jesus Christ crucified and salvation and that's it. Yeah, but do you realize that the Bible also says don't forget all the benefits that come with salvation? Right, do you realize one of the benefits is that you can be filled with the Spirit of God and have the power of God flowing through you like did with Jesus? Yeah. Or actually still does with Jesus? Let me, let me clarify that. Yeah. Amen? I think that's a really awesome benefit. See, what, 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 see I, in, my, in my younger years of being a Christian, my early years of being a Christian, being a baby Christian, I used to always think, man, it would have been so awesome to be able to do the things that Jesus did. Man, it must have been nice to be Jesus. Not because he went to the cross, but just all the cool stuff he could do. Anybody else have that kind of thinking? Yeah. I mean, I was just like, wow. Or man, it would have been awesome to be one of the apostles with him. Because they went out and they did the signs and the wonders and the miracles. Boy, that would have been awesome to be able to live like that. God, why did you bring me now where that stuff is not for us anymore? Why couldn't I have been born back then and been one of your disciples? And then all of a sudden I get the truth and the revelation that, guess what? Same thing that was available for them is available for, for this guy right here. I like that. And that means I don't feel like I got less than cheated, so to speak. If that makes any sense, right? So, so now look at this. 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, here we go, da, 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 chapter 4. Now I'm, I'm, I'm just laying some foundation here because the next two weeks I'm going to just unleash on you just so you all know. I wanted to do it today, but there's no way I could unleash in time. <laughs> here we go. Are you ready? 1 Corinthians chapter 4, if you don't get there in time, it'll be on the screen. Look what it says here. So remember, we talked about in the last days, people are going to be living like this, right? They're going to be going to church, yes, but they're going to deny in the power. Now, now by the way, do you know that, that word denying, though? You know what it, what it means in the original? It means to deflect or to avoid. It means to de deflect or kind of like a politician. You ask them a question and they don't answer the question, they deflect onto something else. See, when I talk to other people, and I, I tell you, I've had this happen, I can't tell you how many times, when, when I'll, I'll get in conversation with somebody else that's a believer that goes to another denomination, and, and we'll talk, this, all of a sudden this subject will come up, and I'll talk about this, because one of the things they'll ask me, well, are you a tongue talker? And I'll be like, of course I am, aren't you? Because it's the will of God for every single person. And, oh, of course not, we don't, we, of course it starts coming up. And you know what, it's amazing when it comes up, they start deflecting, no, let's just stay focused on something that we all agree on. I said, aren't we supposed to all agree on the whole Bible? Wasn't the Bible written to all of us? I think it was. Personally, my, that's my personal opinion. I, I'm just, now, I could be totally wrong. I don't believe that I am, but I, I could be totally wrong. I believe denominations are of the devil. You know what it does is it causes separation in the church. Oh, you're Baptist, you're Methodist, you're Catholic, you're this, you're non-denominational, you're this, you're that. What it does is it causes separation, and God wants unity. We're all, see, I, that's why I don't understand why people avoid this. Well, the Bible says that people are going to deny the power in the last things. That's why it's happening. But look at this. Here we go. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Look what it says here. 1 Corinthians 4, 14 says this. I am writing this not to shame you, but to warn you. Everybody say warn you. Yeah, but to warn you as my dear children, even if you had 10,000 guardians in Christ, you do not have many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I became your father through the gospel. Therefore, I urge you to imitate me. For this reason, I have sent to you Timothy, my son whom I love, who is faithful in the Lord. He will remind you of my way of life in Christ Jesus, which agrees with what I teach everywhere in every church. Look at that. He says, every church I go to, I'm teaching the exact same gospel. I don't go to the, ba the Baptist and the Methodist and the Catholic and this and teach something different. No, I'm teaching one gospel, one word, one message. Right? Aren't you? I mean, that's the way it ought to be today. I'm just being real honest with you. And then look what he says here. Some of you have been arrogant as if I were not coming to you. But I will come to you very soon, but the Lord, if the Lord is willing, and then I will find out not only how these arrogant people are talking, but what? What does it say? But what? What? But what power do they have? That's the same dunamis power 
that the Bible says that Jesus said, you're going to have this power. And he says, when I show up, I'm going to find out who these people are that's not preaching and teaching the truth, and I'm going to find out what power they got. And then look what he, he says this. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, but of power. Look at that. In the last days, we're going to have a bunch of teachers, a bunch of preachers, a bunch of this preaching messages to tickle everybody's ears, but they're going to deny the power. They're not going to want to talk about the power. Or if they do, they're going to teach it in a way that if God does or he doesn't, it's up to him. Where it takes the responsibility off of us. And that is not gospel. And he says, guess what? When I show up, he even dealt with this back then. And if he dealt with this back then, how many guys know in the last days he's, we're going to be dealing with it here? And he says this, he goes, it's not just about a good preaching message, guys. It's not about a 12-minute sermon. Now, we do, and we have short, dark sermons. I used to, for those of you who used to be with us, or used to be us, let me, the ones that are with us now that were with us a while ago, let me clarify that. That didn't sound right. They used to be with us. <laughs> who are you talking to, Pastor? I don't know. The ones that are with us now that were with us several years ago, there were times that I would preach a message, and I'd preach for an hour and a half. I'd preach for an hour and a half. And those people that aren't hungry for God were like, oh, man, don't you understand the buffet line's already started? <sighs> and then those people that are hungry for God are like, you're already done? It's only been an hour and a half, Pastor. We've only been in church for a little over two hours. Are you kidding me? And nowadays, if we go past 30 minutes, people are like, Look, I just got to let you know, the Spirit of God starts moving, we, we just going to keep going with Him. I, you know what? I don't want to check out at 30 minutes or 12 minutes like, like is the standard now in people's churches. Give them 12 minutes. Give them 12 minutes. Because if you go past 12 minutes, you're going to start, you're going to start losing them. What, what? They'll watch a movie for two and a half or three hours at a, at, at, at a theater. That's feeding, that's feeding nothing but stupid, nasty stuff in their head. And then they come to church and say, don't you know there's a race, there's a football game on? Well, we can see where your heart really is. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, all right, anyhow, all right. Yeah. I'm just telling you the, the condition of the church here. Look what it says here. He goes, he goes, he goes, it's not about a matter of just a good speech or talk, but of what? Power. That power is the same dunamis power that Jesus said. It's about the kingdom of God. Now, I believe, I believe you were here you know, some, 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 look, I believe you're here because you want to expand the kingdom of God some way, shape, or form. I do. I believe all of you are here for a reason. Maybe you didn't know the reason, but I, you're here because you want to impact the kingdom of God in some way, shape, or form. How many of you guys would say, yeah, that's being some way, shape, or form? Okay, yeah, all, you're all raising your hands, right? See, the thing about it is, guess what? If you want to expand the kingdom of God, guess what? It's a kingdom built on what? Power. Not just coming in here in the, the pastor or hearing a good man. It's about power. Don't be just hearers of the word, but be what? Doers, Doers of the word. We got to let that power be released in our lives. Look at the, uh, the um, oh, how much time do I got left? Oh boy. Can I give you a couple of translations, just a couple of verses here? All right, verse 19, verse 19, look at that. It says this in the Living Bible. It says, it says, but I will come in soon if the Lord will let me, and then I'll find out whether those proud men are just big talkers or whether they really have God's what? Power. Woo! The kingdom of God is not just talking. It is living by what? God's power. Now, some people, they'll take that translation and they'll say, well, that's talking about living a moral life and, and living a sanctified life. Well, you know what? Half the people aren't even living like that let alone power of God. And you know what? If we want to use it in that category, then start living in the power of God to live a sanctified life and a holy life and let the power of God flow in your life. Right. Amen? Look at the next translation. It says this. But I'll be there sooner than you think, God willing, and then we'll see if they're full of anything but what? Ooh, I, I didn't write this. <laughs> Pastor, you're just calling out a bunch of pastors. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. But what I'm saying is it's not just about a good make-me-feel-good message. 
Boy, Pastor's message was great today, wasn't it? It was spectacular. <laughs> what did he talk about today? I don't know, but I sure felt really good after I left. <laughs> you don't remember what the pastor talked about? No, nope, but I know he mentioned Jesus once. I think, maybe. <laughs> I sure know he quoted a lot of other things outside the Bible, but he did bring up a scripture or two. Can I tell you something? If you go to church and that's all you hear and then you leave and you don't see any power flowing, then maybe we're missing something somewhere. Right. I say, I, I, I just want to tell you where I'm at. I want to see some power flowing. Right. I said, I want to see some power flowing. Yes. Come on, how many of you guys want to see some power flowing in Jesus' name? I'm talking about this same power. Oh. Go ahead and give me the next translation. Go ahead. But I will come and soon, if the Lord lets me, and then I'll find out whether these arrogant people just give pretentious speeches or whether they really have God's power. <whistles> For the kingdom of God is not just a lot of talk. It is living by God's power. Amen. Man, that's awesome. So awesome that God wants you living in his power, not just when we come to church, but all the time. How many of you guys know the Spirit of God said he's never going to leave us nor forsake us? Everywhere we step our foot, the power of God is available at any time, anywhere. And I'm talking about the creative God that can do supernatural signs, wonders, and miracles. Okay, I'm just going to keep... Okay, if you've got, if you got to go watch a football game... Well, the Super Bowl's already happened. Maybe you had something recorded you wanted to watch. I don't know, okay? I'm going to give you a scripture that we've read before, but I want you to see this. Okay? John, look at John. Look at John 14 really quick. I know i got to leave and go up north, but I told my wife I might be a little late today because I love you so much. John 14, look what it says here. And I understand if some of you got to leave early, that's okay. You're, you're, you're welcome to do that. John 14, 14 says this. And we're going to be, actually, no, verse 6. We'll start in verse 6. He says this. Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. If you really knew me, you would know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. How many of you guys know he's doubting right now? Right? And we're, talking about, we're not talking about Thomas here. We're not talking about dotting Thomas. We're talking about Philip. Right? And he says, Jesus answered, don't you know me, Philip, even after I've been among you for such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? Uh, the words that I say to you are not... Excuse me, I do not speak of my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing His work. And then He says this, Believe me. Everybody say, Believe me. Believe who said this again? Jesus. Not Pastor Scott. Jesus said this. Believe me when I say that I am going to the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me, which all of us raised our hands earlier. You said you're a believer. He says, will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father, and I will do whatever you ask in my name so that, so that the Son, or excuse me, and I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in through the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. Man, we even sang about that in our song today. At your name, mountains will tremble. At your name, Right? See, we have the authority of the name of Jesus and we have the power of God available to all of us in our lives. And when he talks about the works here, he's also talking about the mighty working of miracles. He said, the same things that I did in everything that I did, except for the cross. How many of you guys know you don't go to the cross? That was a one-time event. But when he talks about the works, the signs and wonders and the miracles, the good works and all that kind of stuff, he says, is available to all of us. And I'm telling you, we have a God 
that uh, is not concerned about the coronavirus. Hello. You shouldn't say that. You're going to make people upset. Well, I don't know about you, but my Bible says God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of power of, and you know what that power is? Hello, dunamis, hello. But of power, love, and of a sound mind. Well, do you still believe you should wash your hands? Absolutely. I do that before the coronavirus ever showed its ugly face. I still believe we need to take care of ourselves and clean ourselves up. I mean, you live in America. Come on. I mean, uh, look, I'm just telling you, we, we went, my wife and I went through Walmart the other day, and I'm not, I'm not saying anything bad, but I'm telling you, we went by some people that you told couldn't, didn't shower in like a week. Yeah. And, and I'm just being honest with you. Uh, you, uh, you. Body odor, their hair was all greasy, all this other kind of stuff. And the thing, and, and I'm just being, and, and, my, and my thought and her thought is this, why would you allow that to happen in America? You should, maybe in another country, if you don't have clean water, you don't have fresh water and everything else. But, you know, we ought to take care of ourselves. Yeah. I get it. So I get the whole, I get it. Take care of yourself. Wash your hands. I get that. Yeah. But can I tell you something? If something bad happens, guess what? You've got the power that's available to you. Right. Jesus, Jesus did not freak out and go, oh, watch out for the next thing that might show up. He never told his disciples, watch out, watch out. There's something new that's going to come up. Why? I just want to let you know, Wendy, something's coming up in about two months that's going to knock God off his throne. Watch out. But you know what? They're spreading fear all over everywhere else, aren't they? You know what? That is not gospel. That might be government, but that's not gospel. The gospel is good news. The gospel is a gospel of hope. The gospel is, you know what? I'm not going to let anything like that take me out. Now, now, do people, have people died from it? Yeah. But the Bible also says my people perish for lack of knowledge or... Yeah, just like today. Ah, this is so, gosh, this is boring. I wish we would talk about, why don't we just talk about something else? This is so boring. How could the power of God be boring? Right. I mean, we're talking about the same God that can, that can raise the dead. The same God that does creative miracles. Yeah. I'm talking the same, right, right. Creative miracles, right? Right. You, didn't you lose your leg? Or part of it? Or, or right, part of it, right? Right. I mean, what? Yeah, past the knee. So down here is gone, right? In the natural. What are you saying, Pastor? What I'm saying is my God's big enough and the power of God's big enough to have something creative and make That's it. Right. That's right. Well, I don't believe that. Then it'll never happen in your life. Yeah. I'm talking about the same God that, that if you go on a mission trip will heal blind eyes and de open deaf ears. The same God that will have a limb that is totally not there and, and come out or straighten out. I'm talking about the same God that, that, that if you don't have something and you need something, he can have it happen in your life. Amen. That's the kind of God that we're talking about. This is the power that he says the same thing. How many of you guys know there are things that Jesus did? Yes. Like that there were creative miracles that Jesus, literally creative miracles that he did. Yes. Well, if he did that and he says that power that is on me is the same power that can flow through you, then what makes it say that it can happen for him? I'm telling you, it's available. But it also is, the Bible also says, according to your faith, be it done unto you. Now, if, if, if you don't want to believe like that, it doesn't make you any less of a person, even though the power is there. And these next couple of weeks, we're going to go through some examples, and we're going to see where it talks about this dunamis power and watching it flow, because he said, this is available not just for me, but for my disciples also. And what am I trying to do? What am I trying to do? I'm trying to brainwash you in Jesus' name. Yeah. I'm trying to get rid of that old, stinking, unbelieving thinking and have a start believing like what God wants us to believe like. So what are you saying, Pastor? You believe that you can raise the dead? Not in the natural, not, not by myself, no. But with God, absolutely. Yes. You remember? Okay, yeah, sure. I'm just going to hang out. Can I hang out for you one more second? A yeah. couple more seconds. But remember Peter? Remember Peter when he went to the gate? Beautiful, and there was a cripple there. been laying there for a long time. And, and, he, and, and the guy was asking for money. And he said, silver or gold, I don't have it. He didn't, he didn't say he was poor, he was broke. He's like, I don't got my wallet with me. Let's clarify that, okay? Right. Oh, see, Peter was poor. No, he just didn't have money on him. But what did he say after that? He goes, but what I do have, I give to you in the name of Jesus. Rise and, and the power of God flowed in. Instantly, the guy became well. Instantly. 
See, I believe I serve a God of suddenlies. Amen. I believe in a year of harvest. Hallelujah. It's not just financial harvest that we see, but we can see a harvest of miracles. We can see a harvest of people coming into the kingdom of God. We can see a harvest of things we couldn't imagine. That's right. Because God says it's available to us. I don't know about you, but that is good news to me. That is really, really good news to me. Amen. Let me pray for all of you right now. Father, I just thank you for every single person that is in this place. Lord, I thank you that your kingdom is not just a kingdom of talk. It's not just about programs, Lord. It's not just about uh, just a good message. But, Lord, your kingdom is about the power of God flowing in and through our lives. And, Lord, even Paul said, he goes, man, he goes, he goes it's not just about that. I'm going to see if they've really got what they're supposed to have when I get there. And so, Lord, I thank you that, that you will confirm our lives with signs and wonders and miracles. Lord, I thank you that at any moment, at any time this year of harvest, we can see things happen that only can happen by the Spirit of God. Holy Spirit, we thank you that you are the power source. We thank you that you are here with us right now in this room. Lord, I thank you that you are here with us right now in this room. I thank you for filling and refilling of your people in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you that we just focus on you and the, the great things that are available with you. And Lord, I don't want to be like you talk, like, you know, like you said about some of those people in the last days denying the power. Lord, I welcome the power. I thank you for the power flowing in and through our lives. And Lord, I thank you. That might be the only thing that gets certain people's attention is that they see the power of God flowing and that we understand that it's not by might nor by what our own power, but it's by the Spirit of God that things happen. Your power flowing in and through our lives. And so this day, I give you thanks and praise and honor and glory in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Now, is there anybody in here? Anybody in here? According to what we've seen over the last several weeks, I know we didn't talk about this last week. My wife had an awesome message. But is there anybody in here? You said power. Uh, I, 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 I want to deal with that power. I want to flow with that power. See, you can be saved in here, which I believe most of you all are. You can be saved in here, but not have everything that God wants for you. Everything that God wants for you is the power of God. It is the baptism of the power of God, and that comes many times through the laying on of hands. And, and if you're in this place, maybe not, but if you're in this place today, I want to pray for you. I just want to lay hands on you really quick. I know I've prayed for you, but I want to lay hands on you. I want this power to flow in your life. You say, Pastor, I want this power to flow in my life. Or maybe you're in this place, you say, man, I just think I need a refilling. Maybe Because how many of you guys know life happens? And there's a lot of times we can really drain some things out if we don't keep everything plugged up in Jesus' name. And I just want to let you know, man, I want to pray for you. Amen. And I know that I'm supposed to be gone, but that's okay. I told my wife I'm probably going to be late up there. You know why? Because I want to make sure everything takes care of what needs to be taken care of down here. Amen. All right. Is there anybody in here, first and foremost, you want to get saved? You've never given your life to Jesus or maybe you need to rededicate your life? Or maybe you said, I, I, I want that feeling of the power. I believe that power. I want the kingdom of God manifested in and through my life. Is there anybody in here you say, Pastor, that is me. I want you to lay hands on me really quick. It doesn't have to be really long, but really quick. Anybody else? All right. Come up. Come up. Who else? Who else? Got a couple of people. Who else? Anybody else? Okay. All right. Anybody else? Okay. Now's your time. All right. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to encourage both of you guys, don't fall back. There's not going to be anybody behind you. Okay? Don't be falling back, even though the power of God is touching your lives. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, I just thank you right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you for your filling in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you that you are not a respecter of persons, Lord, but I thank you that you are a respecter of your word. And Lord, I thank you that all those examples are in the Bible for us, Lord. It is our instruction manual of how things happen in and through our lives. And so, Lord, I just thank you for a refilling right now in Jesus' name, a special touch in the name of Jesus. Lord, I just thank you right now for a touch right now, right now. Fill, 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 fill. 
overflowing, overflowing in Jesus' name. Overflowing in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you in Jesus' name. Fill, fill, fill in Jesus' name. Overflowing, overflowing, overflowing in the name of Jesus the Christ. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you for wonder, working, spiritual, miraculous power flowing through their lives in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you that you guide them and you direct them, Lord God. Lord, I thank you, Father God, for everything that you have in store for these two right now, not just these two, but every single person that is in this place, Lord. I thank you for divine appointments, Lord. I thank you for special appointments, Lord God, that will allow this power to flow in and through our lives. Lord, it's not us doing it, it's you doing it in and through our lives. And so I give you thanks and praise and honor and glory for, for these lives never to ever be the same in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. God is good. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Woo! Amen. Are you ready? Boy, you're excited about that offering, aren't you, buddy? Come up, do tithes and offerings. I just... Get ready, get ready, get ready, people. Amen. Get ready, get ready, get ready. There, there, there are some things on the, oh, anytime, any day. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you guys learning anything? Isn't this, just aw- this is so awesome. <laughs> okay. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. And like Pastor was saying, we can, man, we need to expect that anointing to work in every area. How many of you are excited about creative miracles? Amen. Those are things that get people's attention, amen? And so, I mean, this year, we need to, I mean, pull off all stops, amen? Expect God to move mightily in our, in our services where you're at at work. Expect God to use you, amen? Lay hands on people, amen? Hallelujah, praise God. Well, like Pastor was saying, it is offering time right now. So if you'd like to have an offering envelope, go ahead and raise your hands. The ushers will bring you an offering envelope. Amen. This is an exciting time. Hallelujah. Hopefully everybody is going to be involved. If you're a part of this church, uh, you will want to be involved in this. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. If you're watching online, you can click on our giving tab and uh, you can give online as well. Uh, I want to read a scripture real quick. The Bible says in Psalms 84 verse 11 says, for the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. Amen. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man who trusts in you. Amen. My voice sounds a little bit different. I apologize for that. I'm feeling much, much better. Uh, I was attacked, uh, golly. And, uh, yeah, I was out of it there for a while, but I stood on the Word. Amen? The Word works. Glory to God. So, uh, but anyhow, the Bible says that the Lord God is a sun and a shield, that no good thing will He withhold from those who walk, walk uprightly. He says the Lord will. Everybody say will. He will give grace. He will. Well, what's grace? Unmerited favor, open doors, opportunities, promotions. Amen. He will do those from those for those who walk uprightly. And then the very last word uh, is King David, and he has a revelation. He says, "O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man who trusts in you." He realizes this, and he sees this in the spirit. But that the man who trusts in God is a very, very blessed man. Amen. Amen. And so as you give today, expect, expect, don't just be throwing, be sowing. Specifically, amen, with an intention. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. Uh, When you have your offering envelope ready, go ahead and hold it up, and the ushers will be by. In the meantime, we're going to watch a video. And so go ahead and start the video. Phrases. My mom used to use phrases. I didn't know what she was talking about half the time. I want you to clean up this room every nook and cranny. Every nook. What is the cranny? Give me some more. I, what's, a, what's a nook? I don't know what that is either, you crazy lady. Is my nook dirtier than my cranny? Well, your nook is fine, but your cranny's filthy. Clean it up now. Clean it up. Pronto. Pronto. 
My mom is awesome, though. See, all she cared about, it's still this day, all she cares about if I have eaten. That's all she cares about. Have you eaten? Have you eaten, son? You look terrible. You look like a freak. You look terrible. Do you need to get something to eat? I'm like, Mom, I weigh 210. No, you look like a little, little freak circus boy. That's what you look like. <laughs> have you eaten? I remember one night, it was like 3 o'clock in the morning. I was in high school. I came home too late. You know, it's dark. You ever do that? You're sneaking in the house. It's just pitch black. So I go in the kitchen, you know, and I turn on the... Oh. No, garbage disposal. Why did they put that stupid garbage disposal thing right by the light? I was expecting a nice warm light. I get... Oh, she was on me like a panther. Where were you? I was worried sick. You could have gotten hurt. Have you eaten? Have you eaten? Wow. All right, we get everybody that wanted to give? All right, gentlemen, come on up here. He's funny. Amen. All right, let's pray. Your Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this awesome opportunity to give into your kingdom, to give into your work. This is a privilege. It's an honor. We thank you, Father, that it's good ground and that the money that comes in is spent wisely and it goes where you want it to go. And we just praise you and thank you that as we are giving for your grace upon our giving, that you are a God who dispenses your grace freely into our lives, increase us, promote us. We thank you for your blessing upon us in every area. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, gentlemen, you can go ahead and take that on back. I got some announcements uh, I want to share with you, of course, coming up this coming Tuesday in just two days. We got armor coming up, amen? And all the men were very, very excited because it's going to be an awesome time. So uh, men 18 and older, uh, be here. Uh, Brent, where, is Brent in here? Okay, well, he's 18 or older, so maybe he can be, yeah, Dave's going to bring him, right? So, oh, yes, he's shaking his head. That's awesome. So, yeah, it'll be a really great time uh, for the men to get together. Pastor Scott does an awesome, awesome job uh, ministering to us man-to-man, -man, and then we have a great uh, snack afterwards. I know because I bring it, so uh, <clears throat> you know it's going to be. No, I'm just kidding. So anyhow, also coming up uh, this next Saturday, March the 7th, the ladies are going out again. Uh, they're doing a virtue lunch, and that is going to be at the El Camino at 1130 on Saturday, March 7th. And so ladies, youth and up, uh, join them at the El Camino in Bluffton, 1130, March 7th. Uh, if you have any questions, see Sue on that. Amen. Also, if you have a birthday, February, March, or April uh, of this year, uh, there's a sign-up sheet out front there. Sign up if, you, if you're coming to the... Uh, man, i got to get my stuff straight here. Sorry about that. If you have a birthday, February, March, or April, pastors would like to celebrate with you at their house, March the 8th from 5 to 6.30, so sign up right out there if you're 18 or older, and then uh, if you are married, you can bring your spouse, and you know the drill on all that, so if you have any questions, you can actually see me on that one, and so also do not forget, also this next Sunday, Daylight Savings Time, do not forget to set your clock forward one hour, right, so you will not be late for service, amen. All right, also a couple more things we need to do before we dismiss uh, is this is the first Sunday of the month, and so uh, it's actually our anniversary uh, today. Uh, so we were married 17 years. Uh, thank you, sweetie, for all the wonderful years, and it's getting gooder and gooder. And so that's our, that's our line. It gets gooder and gooder. So anyhow, uh, we're going to be doing the um, Pledge of Allegiance, and then we're going to be praying for Israel. Amen. How many of you know that's important? So if you would all just stand with me and do the Pledge of Allegiance. And just say it with me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And let's pray for Israel. 
Heavenly Father, we want to thank you. We want to thank you for your covenant. Covenant that you have made with your people. Isaiah 54 talks about that though the mountains depart, though the hills be removed, that your covenant of peace will not depart from your people. And we thank you, Father, that you have a covenant with Israel, a covenant of peace. And that peace involves complete prosperity, complete provision, complete protection. And we just praise you and thank you, Father, for that for Israel. We want to thank you, Father, that your grace and mercy is on that nation and is working through that nation. We thank you, Father, for upholding them by your word in Jesus' name. We want to thank you, Father, as Pastor Scott was saying today, that your power is at work in that nation in a mighty way. In Jesus' name, we give you all the praise and the glory for it. Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, we have a testimony from uh, Bar. Is she in here? Okay, we will give that next Sunday, actually. So God bless you all. Have an awesome day. Don't forget to be here Thursday, 7 p.m., Authority of the Believer.